Hello guys and welcome to Late Night Frights. I'm Chris Brock and today the theme of the week is top 10 underrated horror films and this is uh, in no particular order. It is a subjective list. Uh, you know, these are just my opinions so please respect that. Uh, we'd love to hear your opinions down below so, you know, leave a comment. Uh, tell us what you think of my list and uh, what would your list be? And again, this isn't like a countdown from 10 to 1. It's just 10 horror films I think are underrated and don't get enough credit as they deserve. So the first one, I'm not going to go in depth on these movies by the way. The first one is a 1987 film, John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness. Uh, I thought it had a great atmosphere, great score. Uh, the plot with the Antichrist was uh, really cool. And uh, the uh, special effects looked really good. You have uh, Donald Pleasance as a priest. You know, right here you can see he's wielding the axe which is really cool and uh, you know he helps defeat the Antichrist uh, just very uh, very uh, atmospheric uh, movie uh, just whenever I popped it into the blu-ray player started watching it uh, I don't know it just it had this vibe to it and I really enjoyed the vibe to it the atmosphere to the film uh, don't know why people think that this is uh, John Carpenter's worst film I wouldn't say it's a great film like Halloween or anything but I did enjoy this one, and if you're a John Carpenter fan, I'd say check it out. Here is the original cover art for the film, by the way. Prince of Darkness. So, <clears throat> yeah, just don't know why people hate this film. I uh, thought it was pretty good. Uh, my next one is a Kevin Astini film, Not of the Demons, 1988. Uh, just a cheesy 80s horror film. I haven't heard nobody, or I never heard anybody talk about this film hardly. Until the Scream Factory release, which is a great edition to have. It's a collector's edition DVD and Blu-ray combo pack. Packed with uh, special features. Uh, I'd recommend this one. And here is, uh, along with uh, the Prince of Darkness one as well. Uh, here is the original poster art. Sorry for the glare. I'm using my webcam. Um, the Prince of Darkness one just didn't have too many special features. But this one does. And the transfer and audio on both of them are awesome. Uh, the film itself was uh, just a cheesy 80's horror film, a uh, possession film about demons uh, as you guys see here on the back uh, the demon Angela uh, the demons just had a uh, unique look to them they, you know they all wasn't the same looking and that's what I really liked about it is they had a unique look to them they all looked different um, it was just cheesy 80's horror film you have Linnea Quigley in this who uh, was in Night of, or not Night of the Living Dead my bad uh, The Return of the Living Dead uh, you get to see a lot of her. You get to see her boobs, her butt. Uh, I don't know if you get to see uh, her pee pee, her pretty puss. Um, I don't know <laughs> if you get to. Um, but there's one scene, uh, the lipstick scene. Oh man, that made me cringe. Um, just overall enjoyed this film. Had a good Halloween vibe to it. Good Halloween atmosphere. I'd say put this in around Halloween time, mid October, or on Halloween night if you want to. And I think you'll enjoy it the most then. I'd say check this out. Uh, if you're a fan of Night of the Demons, pick this edition up. It's better than the out-of-print DVD, which is uh, more expensive than this. And don't have nearly as much special features. Uh, the next one is a 2007-2008 film. I don't know what year it came out, but Liv Tyler, Scott Speedman, that is The Strangers. And I know I might get a lot of hate for this, but I just really enjoyed The Strangers. I um, thought it was a very suspenseful uh, film. And a lot of people, I, I can see why people dislike this film because um, they say it's very slow paced. And I, I do kind of agree with that, but it's trying to build suspense up. Uh, trying to build suspense up. And it does. It does It does for me, at least. Um, you know. And there's a couple jump scares that I won't lie, it did scare me. I jumped in uh, where the scene where she looks out the window and uh, you see one of the strangers with the burlap sack. I jumped, man. It, it did scare me. It got me because I haven't seen the film in such a long time. Uh, just enjoyed this film. Don't know why a lot of people hate this film. It's a good home invasion film. Uh, I do uh, prefer Your Next over this. Just by a little bit. I thought Your Next was a... Uh, well, I'll, I'll do that another time. Uh, the Strangers. Do you uh, really think this is an underrated horror film? Don't know why it gets all the hate that it does get. Uh, I didn't think it was that bad. Uh, the next one is a Halloween uh, sequel, and that is Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. Uh, this is uh, the three film pack thingy, which uh, I really hate because it's a double-sided disc. But uh, 
just something about this film I like. Uh, I hate the Thorn story, like uh, Jordan said. I think it's ridiculous, but I like George P. Wilbur as Michael Myers. I like the look of Michael Myers in this film. Uh, George P. Wilbur is actually a really good Michael Myers, uh, in my opinion. Not he ain't no uh, you know Nick Castle or Dick Warlock, but uh, you know he's up there with them. Uh, probably my third favorite Michael Myers. Uh, or God to portray Michael Myers. Um, just what I like about this film is the kills. I think the kills were done really well. I like uh, the kill when Michael Myers, you know, takes that nurse by the neck, lifts her up, and just impels her onto the spike, and it starts playing that electric guitar theme. Uh, I just thought that was awesome. And then when he kills uh, the father uh, in the basement and just electrocutes him, I uh, just thought that was awesome. It's uh, Donald Pleasant's last uh, role before he passed away. I just want to say rest in peace, Donald Pleasant's. Um, not a good film, or not a great film, uh, I don't know if I'd say it was a good film, I thought it was okay, um, okay sequel, uh, a lot of people hate it, but I thought it was okay, I, you know, there's something about it that I do enjoy, uh, and that's The Curse of Michael Myers, don't know why I enjoy it, uh, just something about it makes it a guilty pleasure for me, uh, and that's just with, uh, Freddy's Dead, I feel the same way about that, it's not a good film, but it's a guilty pleasure, uh, this one is a sequel, in the Friday the 13th franchise, and that is Friday the 13th Part 2. Um, I just, okay, I know I might get a lot of hate for this too. Um, I like this one better than the original. I just thought it was done better, it had a you know, higher body count. I love the kill when uh, Jason takes a machete, puts it right in the guy's face who, you know, is in the wheelchair, and he just goes uh, down the steps. I just thought that was a really awesome kill. I uh, love the burlap sack look, or the, you know, Jason with the burlap sack over his face. I really dug that look of Jason. I uh, just thought it was creepy, you know. Obviously, everybody says, you know, that was inspired by the town that dreaded sundown. And uh, I can see that a whole lot. I can probably, I'll probably uh, say it was, because I don't really think there was a coincidence there. Uh, but I just really dug the look of uh, Jason in this film. Uh, just for some reason, I just like it better than the original. A lot of people just skip on it and uh, don't know why. It's not a bad film, not a bad sequel. Uh, so those are all for the ones that I do own. Uh, so I'm gonna go with the ones that I don't own. And uh, the first one is a Wes Craven film, Deadly Blessing. It's uh, this Amish-themed horror film. Uh, just a unique horror film. I really liked it. Very, I thought it was, uh, you know, entertaining. Uh, just I hear absolutely nobody talk about this film and. Uh, I didn't think it was that bad. I enjoyed it. I liked the twist at the end. And uh, I thought it was a pretty good uh, Wes Craven film. I, I'm a really big fan of Wes Craven. Uh, so that's Deadly Blessing. Check it out if you haven't. It's a Scream Factory release. The next one is 1981's The Burning. I uh, just really enjoyed The Burning. had a great uh, atmosphere to it. felt more like a camp than uh, the original Friday the 13th did. And Cropsey is a great killer. I think he's an underrated killer. I love the Wrath Boat Massacre scene with the shears. He just went ham on people. thought that was great. So, The Burning, I'd definitely say check that one out as well. It's another Scream Factory release that I need to pick up. I'll probably pick that up pretty soon. Uh, the next one is another Wes Craven film, The People Under the Stairs. I uh, just really dug this film. It was unique. Uh, you think it's going to go one way, it goes the other. Uh, yeah, just, um, I like uh, this guy. Uh, one of the killers is uh, running around in a gimp suit, a leather gimp suit, has a shotgun, just screaming and shooting the walls. Uh, this is a very entertaining film, and you have to watch it. It's very hard to explain, but uh, 1991 film, uh, yeah, I'd say it's underrated. I really enjoyed it. I uh, don't know why it don't get talked about, as you know, it should. It should get talked about a little bit. It was an enjoyable film. Also, it has Vin Rames in it, which is awesome, because I loved him in uh, the Dawn of the Dead remake. I thought he was... Did a pretty good job in that film. Uh, the next one is The Faculty. Uh, I watched this film after uh, seeing a review from Jordan. I just really dug it. I can see why people passed on it. You know, a 90s alien teen flick. But it has uh, Elijah Wood. It has Josh Hartnett. The guy or the girl who played uh, Jean Grey in X-Men. Just had a pretty solid cast. Uh, I don't know. I went into it not having that high of expectations. Uh, just dug it, man. Thought it was a pretty good film. I wouldn't mind adding it to my collection. So that is a faculty. Uh, the next one is a 1993 horror film. The, uh, not yet, yeah, 1993 horror film. Leprechaun. Um, just a childhood favorite of mine. I grew up with the, the Leprechaun franchise. Watched it, uh, you know, every St. Patrick's Day. It always air on, uh, Sci-Fi. And, uh, this one is cheesy. Not as cheesy as the sequels. 
But uh, just really enjoyed this one. Uh, it's Jennifer Aniston's first film. And you just have a killer leprechaun running around. And yeah, a lot of people go into this, you know, uh, expecting it to be serious. Uh, it's more serious than the sequels, but it does have that cheesiness to it. And it's just good cheesiness. I just really enjoy uh, the first Leprechaun. I do enjoy the first three the most. Uh, I don't know. Just really like the Leprechaun. I think uh, Warwick Davis just brought something to the role of Leprechaun. Uh, and I do agree with Jordan that, uh, you know, a doll from Chucky just, you know, couldn't do. Uh, he just brought this great sense of humor to the character of Leprechaun. And uh, I don't know. I really like Leprechaun. I think he's a great killer. Uh, <laughs> It's just entertaining to watch. Um, so that was my top 10 underrated horror films. I'm sorry that I didn't have, uh, you know, a lot to show you. But uh, definitely go check out the other members and leaders' videos. I'll leave the Facebook link and the website link down below. And, uh, yeah, guys, thanks for watching.